Man, I got a real late one for you. I'm recording this about 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So for all my West Coast guys, you're getting this probably decent time. But hey, when I find some tidbits of information, I'm going to get it to you as soon as I can. What is up, Finn fans? If you could tell by the title, I got some updates on Emmanuel Ogba and Xavier Howard. Now, I'm recording this late. Like I said, it's about 1030 at night, so I'm going to give you guys a quick update on that. I got the little quotes from um, Dan Marino on Tua that we're going to talk about, and then I get to comment of the day. So this is going to be a quick little video. If you're watching this tomorrow, say like you're already asleep because you got work or whatever, you're watching this tomorrow, maybe give you a little tidbit of information while you're getting news about the mandatory minicamp that is happening tomorrow, or if you're watching this on Tuesday, today, early. So I'm just going to jump right into it. Like I said, quick video, got some information, late night video for you. For Emmanuel Agba, I'm hearing from his agent, Drew Rosenhaus, this is on Barry Jackson's article, that he will attend mini camp tomorrow or today for you guys. So if, again, you're not watching this when I release this Monday night, you will probably already have seen that Emmanuel Agba is intending mandatory mini camp. Um, this is the quote from Drew Rosenhaus. He said, we'd like to get an extension done. We've approached the Dolphins about that. That's as much as I can say. So the Dolphins have, uh, the, Drew Rosenhaus and you know Emmanuel Agba have been in contact with the Dolphins about getting an extension. This is the last year of his contract. You know, he had a fantastic year last year with the Dolphins coming from the Kansas City Chiefs. So he's he's like, hey man, I'm healthy. I did some great things for you. Return the favor. So I think he's going to be the next one. I think Jerome Baker got his. I think he's going to be next. And I think Kaziki is potentially going to be another one that's getting, uh, you know, in a little bit of an extension. So there's that. Emmanuel Agba from Drew Rosenhaus, from his agent, will be there tomorrow, today, if you're watching this on Tuesday, in mandatory mini camps. Now, mandatory mini camps are different because you will get fined if you um, if you don't show up. I think from what I'm reading here, it's like ninety three thousand uh, dollars. NFL players who do not attend mandatory mini camp are subject to fines in the range of ninety three thousand dollars. Coach Brian Floyer said last week he expects every player to attend this week's session, uh, which will conclude the team's offseason program. So again, today, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So the 17th is the last day of mandatory minicamps, and then the Dolphins um, get a break till the 27th of July. So like I said, Emmanuel Ogba will be there. For Xavier Howard, his agent did not get back to um, Barry Jackson, did not get back to anyone, is kind of non-committal about it. Um, but people that are close with Xavier Howard has said that he will be at mandatory minicamps tomorrow, again, today, if you're watching this on Tuesday, because he wants to avoid those fines of $93,000. So from what I'm hearing, Emmanuel Ogba and Xavier Howard will will be at mandatory minicamp. We'll see if that pans out. Again, I'm recording this Monday night. I'm releasing this late Monday night. So for the people who have woken up Tuesday and are watching this, you either know or you're waiting just like me on Monday night. I'm also hearing that Xavier Howard is dealing with a minor quad injury. So we expect to not see him doing much in mandatory minicamps. He'll most likely be on the sideline with Kaziki and Preston Williams and all these other guys that are banged up, slowly coming back and just riding the stationary bike doing, you know, sideline stuff. So that is the information on update because a lot of you guys have been asking me, hey, what's the update on Xavier Howard? What's the update on Emmanuel Akba? That's it. From inside sources, I'm hearing Howard will be there tomorrow, Wednesday and Thursday, and I'm hearing Emmanuel Akba the same, but from his agent, Drew Rosenhaus. Then Dan Marino sat down with ESPN, uh, Cameron Wolf, and he had a little discussion. And I have a few quotes here um, that I'm going to read for you. So... This is what he had to say, and this is talking about Tua. He's been great. He's been awesome. He has all the talent in the world. Now it's just about him developing the relationship with other players. It's been a tough. It's been tough because he didn't have OTAs last year. A lot of summer camp or um, the chance to play in an exhibition game. All of those things delay you somewhat. I'll tell you, he works his butt off. I really, ex I'm really excited about him, his future, and our future as a team. Which I think all of us that, you know, don't have, you know, a, a hatred for him kind of understand that, you know, 
would, would we have liked to seen more from him uh, last year? A hundred percent. You know, he did go six and three. He did throw, you know, way more touchdowns and interceptions. He did throw for, you know, he did play well. There was games where he did it and there were games where he kind of just rode with the defense and, you know, whatever the defense gave him, he took. But like Dan Marino was saying, this kid works his butt off. And I've talked about this time and time again. So I'm going to get real. I'm going to be real quick about it because he has about two more quotes that I'm going to read. We've seen it before where this kid has the, the chips stacked against him. You know, people have him down and out. Ask Trent Dilfer. And he comes back and he does fantastic. So I'm hoping for that. He uh, Marino also says, as times go as time goes on, you get a better handle or of responsibilities. You know your people. That's what OTAs is about, getting your timing down. He played a lot last year, and when he played, we won games. We almost got into the playoffs. All that is positive. You try to build from the positives. What's to be really good, uh, Marino said, Tua wants to be really good, and in, in time he's going to be uh, get there because that's what type of kid he is. So Marino likes Tua. Marino likes what he sees from Tua. Um, but, yeah, this is the last thing I'm going to say about it because we're going into mandatory mini camps tomorrow, and it's just time to move on. And I've said this time and time again, but it's just time to move on. You can't blame Tua – for the Dolphins not making the playoffs. It's just unfair to put all of the blame for them not making the playoffs on his shoulders. Because there's a lot of factors into why the Dolphins didn't make the playoffs last year. They won 10 games. Normally you win 10 games, you make the playoffs. Yeah, Doug, but that Buffalo Bills game. Tua didn't give up 56 points and especially give up a ton of points to backups. So, again, did he play fantastic? No. But even if Tua what, did go out there and drop, what, let's say 28 points, they still would have lost because the defense wasn't stopping the Bills' first string or second string offense. Also, hey, if we would have just won one more game, like the Denver game, we would have made the playoffs. Yeah, well, then why didn't we win the Seattle Seahawks game when we kicked five field goals? See what I'm saying? So, you can't put it all on this kid's shoulders. Again, I've said this time and time again. Should he have played better in certain games? Yeah, of course. But there was different circumstances. Same thing with Fitz. He should have played better in certain games, but he didn't. And it happens. So let's move on. Let's see how this kid does this year. If he doesn't do well this year, then all of a sudden, all right, we got to probably see. I, I don't know if they might keep him, but still bring in someone else. I don't know. Let's just see what he does this year. But be sure to comment below. What do you guys think about Emmanuel Ogba and Xavier Howard? Seeming like they're going to be there tomorrow or today, again, when you're watching this. And what do you think about the quotes from Dan Marino? You could say that, oh, well, Dan Marino said all this stuff because he's just being PC and, you know, he's just saying the right things and yada, yada, blah, blah, blah. Be sure to comment below and I'm going to get to your guys' comment of the day. This comment comes from Jerome. And he says, do you believe this regime believes in the idea of draft pedigree as much as past ones? It seems like we love undrafted free agents, Preston Williams, not Needham, unless you said Nick Needham. I think you meant to say Nick Needham. So let, let's say uh, it seems like we like our undrafted free agents, Preston Williams, Nick Needham, and our starting running back will probably be Gaskins at round seven, uh, round seven pick. Um, yeah. Yeah. The Miami Dolphins um, right now are in a different type of regime, a different type of way of going about it, right? If you're worth the money, they will give you the money. If, you're, if your play dictates that you deserve the money, they will give it to you. Look at the players they've re-signed and look at the players they went after, right? They gave big money to Byron Jones. Yes, Byron Jones gave up a few big plays last year, but if you take away the um, BS, which should have been a pass interference against the Raiders, he got pushed off bad. He actually played really well last year and shut down a lot of people. Yes, he doesn't have crazy interceptions like Xavier Howard, but that's just not the type of corner he is. He's going to shut this guy down and then you're going to have to focus on the other side. So if you're worth the money, they'll give it to you. But mostly you've seen a lot of their success and a lot of the players that are um, are starting for them, especially last year. We had a ton of rookies starting for us last year. Some of them played, eh, some of them played pretty well, pretty good. Um, and for a rookie, for a rookie year, no OTAs, no minicamp, no preseason, nothing. Came in and, and, and helped us win 10 games. Had the second youngest team in the NFL last year, and we won 10 games. 
So yeah, I honestly think that they 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 like to focus on the draft more, especially because when it comes to money, you don't have to pay these guys as much. And if you hit on these players and you hit on the draft picks, you have a very good player for five years. If it's the first round pick, if it's the second and whatever, four years. So the Dolphins seem to be focusing on the draft, but they also will add good players through free agency. Like I said, they traded for McKinney, they signed Byron Jones, you know, they will add those those pieces that they think are the missing pieces. So, I hope I answered your question, Jerome. Again, this is a short video. I just want to give you guys an update on Emmanuel Agua, Xavier Harrod, give you the quotes on Dan Marino. But I will see you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow uh is the start of mandatory mini camp. So, I'm hoping the media gives you give us breakdowns and play by plays and stuff like that. Because as soon as they're done, I will come and make a video for you. So, I will see you guys tomorrow. Uh, I don't know what time they'll be done, maybe around like three, four o'clock. I'll get the video up to you and we'll see about the 16th and the 17th. Uh, but other than that, hope you guys have a good rest of your night. And if it's Tuesday morning, good morning to you. Hope you enjoy your coffee or whatever while you're watching slash listening to this. But like usual, guys, stay classy. Fins up.